title, new world title. World Championship led by Brits, Webster and Woodhead. Let's go back to Donington. Welcome to Donington Park for the World Sidecar Cup round three. They've been to South Africa, to Kyle Army. They've been to Australia, to Phillip Island. Now they're here in far better weather altogether in Great Britain at Donington Park. And the men who are leading the World Championship, Steve Webster and his new sidekick Paul Woodhead in the team Steinhausen Racing, Racing Suzuki are on pole position. And remember, it's an arrowhead formation pole position. So these guys, Klaus Klappenbach and Adolf Harney, second in the championship last year, second in qualifying, have to be behind that Olympia recent Steinhausen Racing Suzuki. And that's Webster and Woodhead, who have a clear view of the track in front of them down to Redgate. They won in Australia. They were second in South Africa. They won in Australia after some extremely dodgy tactics by uh, an outbreaking manoeuvre on sheer marbles that sent them skittling into the side of Klaffenbock in the Honda turn, the hairpin turn on the last lap. And uh, Klaffenbock almost upended, lost his passenger, Adolf Harney, as you may very vividly remember. And that's the number 21 Honda Britain outfit of Molyneux and Hill, former T uh, TT winners, who've uh, so far not had much success here on the World Championship scene. They've yet to open their scoring. Perhaps today will change everything for those axle-clad blue and white boys. So that's uh, the number 21 outfit we'll be keeping an eye out for, David Molyneux and Peter Hill on the Molyneux Racing Honda. Alongside him on the third row of the grid, the number 17 machine of Benny Janssen and Trevor Hopkinson, the Janssen Racing BRM Dutch uh, racer, the former world motor sidecar cross champion way back in 1990. With his new passenger, Trevor Hopkinson, he lost his, uh, his original Dutch passenger last year. Um, they'd had a long and uh, illustrious career together, but, uh, both on dirt and on the road. But uh, a nasty accident at Albacete meant that we waved bye-bye to uh, the original passenger there. We've also got welcoming number three, Stevie Abbott and Jamie Biggs on the Grevensek Racing Yamaha. Um, they, of course, haven't been with us so far. They didn't make the long, expensive trip to South Africa and to Australia. This is the number six outfit of Paul Muldoon, Stuart Muldoon, sorry, and Chris Gussman, the Clark Grand Prix Racing ADM. And uh, the, Scot the Scottish outfit will be looking to make some sort of impression here at Donington Park. It's as near as they get to home territory. We don't go much further north than this. I'm Jack Burnicle. I've got with me, along alongside me, I've got a man who, very bravely, went on four or five laps round Donington Park yesterday with, oh, beg your pardon, on Friday, with Steve Webster. Now, this is true, isn't it, Rob? Because I didn't see it for real. I've got to believe it, and I think I know that it's true because you looked incredibly wide-eyed and exhilarated when you reappeared on Friday evening. So, yeah. tell me about it. What was it like? Well, we, we spoke about it almost jokingly at uh, Phillip Island. Steve Webster came up to me and said, I know you've got a, a poorly left knee, but that's no excuse that you won't come out and be passing you with me for a handful of laps at, when we get to Donington Park. But Sure enough, I showed up on Friday evening after regular on-track work had been done and uh, got permission from SBK and the management here at Donington Park. And about five past six, I n the most exciting and exhilarating uh, experiences I've ever had next to uh, doing some free-fall parachuting a few years ago. <laughs> no, I can't stay away from these reckless things, but joking apart, it's given me a first-hand experience of uh, just what you've got to do, what you've got to um, be able to cape, uh, cope with out there on track. The uh, gripping points on these enormously powerful 1200cc uh, Suzuki outfits, the, the main anchor point is just uh, with your left hand in the middle of the uh, part of the, the passenger compartment. And uh, I was given good advice by Steve Webster, he said, and Paul Woodhead said, do not let go of that, whatever you do. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it's a left-hander or a right-hander or breaking for the straights, hang on to that centre section, which I did, a real white-knuckle ride. And uh, I made some ginger efforts at changing position for the left-handers and right-handers around Donington Park, but by far the most exhilarating... ...of Red Gatewood, can't, and uh, I think... He's certainly lost out big time because Steve Webster is the man who's powered through to the front. Oh, he had that advantage, of course, of that wonderful arrowhead formation start, which is um, very nice for the man in pole position, uh, which he secured with a 138.045 lap. 
ahead of Klaffenbock and Harney, 138.333. And Steinhausen and Christian Parzer on 139.512. And look at the outfits hammering down the hill now towards the old hairpin. Oh, using all the track and more. At the front, we've got that outfit of Webster and Woodhead. And uh, they are the guys who are leading the World Championship at the moment. So the man who's got oh, that terrible start from the Clark Grand Prix outfit of Paul Muldoon and uh, Chris Gusman. They are way downfield on outfit number six. But look at the lead that Webster's pulling out already. The number three outfit of Stevie Abbott and Jamie Biggs. Welcome back, boys, on the Yamaha uh, in the frame as they come howling down the hill. In fact, they're in second place. They're suddenly up into second place. And... Uh, Klaus, Klaus Klaverbox tried to follow them through. Whoa, one of them's gone straight on there. It might have been the Molyneux Hill outfit. I'm not sure, but someone went straight on at the Fogarty S's. Not the way that they wanted to go, nor the way they intended to go. Here's Klaverbox. He's through on the inside and is pursuing Swy. The, Scott, the uh, Clark Grand Prix outfit was downfield. They had some problem, Rob. They've had to dive into pit lane and uh, out they go again, but they'll be nearly a lap down. So a lousy start there to the guys who were uh, presently 10th in the championship, Muldoon and Gusman. 5%, but the number seven outfit there, good old duct tape there, there's some, the bodywork's been broken, and so they're just doing a quick pit lane repair job on that, and back out, the grey pointer outfit, the ADM two-stroke outfit, back out on track again. But that engine on the 33 outfit has well and truly lunched itself, smoked like that, <laughs> well, they're not going to restart the race. Better to get out. And uh, the Stafford Cox Suzuki GSXR engine is on fire. We need some fire extinguishers, please. Get the fire department over there. That is thousands. Stafford and Cox pleading with someone yes. to come and put it out. That is, I think, at Redgate, breaking for Redgate Corner. But it doesn't matter where it is. That bodywork is going to be getting very, very hot. And they've sprayed that fire extinguisher just about everywhere else. Now this this raises an interesting point. Does the guy who do, do the guys have to have been in the race at that point? We haven't got predictable weather. It's just great when it's around, so you make full use of it. <laughs> Very much so. And here's the look. Here's Jack Clark himself, and uh, Jack Muldoon himself rather. The Clark Grand Prix Honda team in his kilt. He says that um, nowadays he'll always uh, he'll always stick a kilt on to um, make sure that everyone's aware that they're Scottish. See those? We'll have to get a tyre that's going to be able to transmit that power to the track surface. For 23 laps, Indeed. or in this case 18, but that's long enough. Yeah, absolutely right. But, uh, talk... but it's, it's great to know that at least it's benefit. This restart has benefited a few people, and there is the Clark Grand Prix outfit amongst them because we were down to 10 outfits circulating on the same lap after three laps. So we're hoping that the 20 guys on the grid this time around can uh, manage a little more than that. Uh, get as far as Webster, at least he knows he's secure in second place. And Stevie Abbott and Jamie Biggs once more coming round the outside on that green and silver outfit. Steinhausen is in fourth place behind. Behind says Stevie Abbott and Jamie Biggs, but the men at the front are the men you expect it to be. And look at the daylight underneath Adolf Harney's chair wheel there as they go down through the craner curves and then sling it left. And that's through the old hairpin daylight once again as they go up onto Starkey's and up towards McLean's. ...that we saw in Australia. But to answer the question on tyre choice, uh, with both places, Steve Abbott. And this is the Clark Grand Prix team of Muldoon and Gusman diving inside that number 10 outfit of Patrick Honke and Pascal Legrave. Good move from him. And this is an interesting... This too much momentum, so the, the corner speed, the net effect is the corner speed is higher. Right. As you would do perhaps in a kart, kart racing, you tug the steering wheel and the back end slips around whilst maintaining the revs and, and momentum. So it's a similar sort of principle. But I haven't yet, I haven't yet driven a sidecar outfit, so perhaps <laughs> I should speak with Steve Webster. <laughs> and he might trust, trust me and allow me to drive his, although it's not likely to be till the end of the season. <laughs> this is the Clark Grand Prix outfit. Stuart Angus Muldoon is the man in the driving seat and to Chris Dipstick Gusman. This is the team for having lost his uh, sidecar passenger to reigning champion Steve Webster. And look at the last three gaps from 3.375. That gap has been reduced to 1.213 seconds between this man, Stevie Webster, and that man, Klaus Klaffenbach, who's... 12 now of... Uh, uh, oh, and the Clark race. Grand Prix outfit, the number seven Clark Grand Prix outfit. That's uh, the Brian Gray... The grey pointer outfit is out. I beg your pardon, Rob, I was, I was revving up then because for a second I thought it was a number six outfit of Muldoon that had gone out. But no, it's uh, Brian Gray who's, um, well, 
looking just... He's got a gap of 4.8 seconds over his teammate, Jörg Steinhausen. But remember, Steinhausen's involved with a battle in a battle for championship honours himself, so there's not going, to be, not going to be any team orders there. As uh, the number six outfit of Muldoon and Gusman is battling to stay ahead of the number 20 outfit of uh, Victor Hansen and Tony Soares, the Hansen Racing outfit. And look, just in front of them, number 22, Tom Hanks and Phil Biggs, the Hanks Racing Yamaha. So some great action going on amongst the British boys here. And that's uh, Tom Hanks, of course, uh, a guest rider, really, in the World Cup, a wild card here at Donington Park. And he's got the regular um, British campaigners, Muldoon and Gusman, for company. Muldoon and Gusman down in 10th place in the championship. They, uh, they haven't had a very good start to the series. They've got 10 points in South Africa. They've got nothing in Australia. And uh, they'd deeply like to put that to right. And I think they'd deeply like to get past Tom Hanks as well. At the moment, these guys are lying in 6th place. Tom Hanks is 5th ahead of them. And look at that. FTC Hanks racing Yamaha. Oh! And <laughs> Muldoon is obviously desperately trying to find a way through as they snake through McLean's. The battle for fifth place here at Donington Park in the Sidecar World Cup. Tom Hanks, number 22, outfit with Phil Biggs in the chair, ahead of the number six outfit of Stuart Angus Muldoon and Chris Dipstick Gusman. And who's going to get it? Because this is this is a great battle going on. The guys from the Clark Grand Prix team who remember were having overheating problems right at the beginning of the first attempt at running this race. They slide down the inside and Tom Hanks left the barn door open and... Muldoon said, thanks very much, I'm on my way through. So Angus sneaks through into fifth place and instantly Tom Hanks thinks about retaliating into Goddard's but uh, decides to think better of it. No, perhaps I can't quite fit. We need a bit more space than that. I am not a solo machine. As they scream across the start and finish line now with three laps to go. They're passing our, our commentary position and they're throwing it right into Redgate. Uh, Klaus Klaverbock at the front has a 4.8 second advantage over Stevie Webster. And Webster in turn has a 4 second, exactly 4 second advantage over his teammate York Steinhausen. And uh, Benny Janssen, uh, all on his own, he is in 4th place. And 5th and 6th place are these guys, Stuart Muldoon and Tom Hanks battling it out. It looks as like if Muldoon's got this one won. I don't know whether Muldoon's got any possibility of actually making any inroads into Benny Janssen's lead on him. It looks like he's pretty much on his own, but he's certainly looking crisp as uh, the outfit. I love the way the outfit sort of bite chunks out of the corners. There's no sort of um, there's no sort of predictable radius about the way go they go through them. But does it feel like that when you're in the chair, Rob? Very much so. It feels worse than that because you're actually in the air experience leanly around this time. Klaus Klaffenbach, he's beginning to look at it. Tom Hanks and Phil Biggs in the closing stages on that uh, Yamaha engine. So Suzuki's, Suzuki BRM, ADM and Yamaha are all featuring in, the, in that top six. Behind them, we've got... Gun.